beginning of the season, the Lakers had so much promise and optimism, right? They were one of the favorites to win the championship. Many people were very excited for this Hall of Fame team, but it hasn't really worked out so far. Now, we still have, after the All-Star break, where teams sort of ramp things up, so maybe they could flip that switch, but they haven't shown any signs that they're capable of doing so. They have looked a little more energetic the last few games. They just beat Utah, but I wouldn't put too much weight into that. Anthony Davis just got hurt again, and don't get me wrong. This team from day one was built for the playoffs. This is a team that is veteran-led, that knows and have been in those situations. The game slows down tremendously in the playoffs. The little tic-tac stuff goes away, and... With LeBron, a healthy Anthony Davis, and Westbrook, they're going to be a tough out, especially in a seven-game series. Now, I wouldn't say that they're good enough to win a championship or anything like that, but I wouldn't be surprised if, with the right matchups, they could get there. I mean, I wouldn't rule them out beating the Warriors. I wouldn't rule them out, you know, beating maybe a Memphis, uh, Utah. They have seemed to have their number. Uh, there's several teams in the Western Conference that they could beat. And then depending on who comes out of the West, they again could have a puncher's chance. But the big issue with the Lakers has been what and why haven't they done a trade at the trade deadline, right? Many people thought that they would blow it up, that they would tr try to go get some assets, trade Russell Westbrook, even though Russell Westbrook hasn't really been the sole problem. He's not the main issue. And he's proven that in many ways. I mean, even the game where he didn't play, they still lost and they still struggled. And all of the issues that we have talked about were still there. And then when Westbrook played by himself, he almost single-handedly won a tough game. But again, the issues were still there. And it's not solely on Westbrook. Westbrook isn't the sole blame. But he's kind of developed into this scapegoat. Vogel is just as much to blame, if not more in my opinion, because of his lineups. But when it comes to the playoffs, those lineups will shorten up. You're only going to play seven to eight guys. And so he won't do and throw out all these mixtures of players. And there will be more cohesiveness as the playoffs go on. Not just that, but hopefully by then, the big three will be more established. They've only played 16 games, full games uh, total together as the three. So hopefully when they get to the playoffs, their experience will shine. But when it comes to the trade deadline, like what were they supposed to do? That's the big thing. People wanted to see them make some sort of trade, but there was no impact player that's going to turn the Lakers season around that they would have been able to go get. They don't have the assets. Nobody's going to take on Russell Westbrook in the offseason, maybe, because he would be an expiring contract. So maybe you have teams that are willing to bring him on. But this season, nobody's taking him on. And many people wanted to see him get traded for John Wall. But again, you're going to give up a draft pick that could be used to trade or maybe a significant player in the offseason. We don't know what's going to happen. What happens if a star or some player wants out and wants to go to the Lakers? Let's say Damian Lillard. What if Damian Lillard says, I want you to trade me, but I only want to go to the Lakers? You know, like that is a real possibility. It has happened in the past. I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but why give up all your assets now for a season that essentially, no matter what you traded for, wasn't going to change and make you a contender overnight, even if you did trade John Wall for Westbrook? It's not such a huge upgrade that you immediately become better. John Wall, maybe you can argue, would be slightly an upgrade, but not by a long shot. And we don't even know if he could stay healthy. At least with Westbrook, he's been Mr. Dependable. You know he's going to be there every game. He's going to, he'll play the entire game if you need him to. He won't sit. He's not going to complain about playing too many minutes or anything like that. He's not going to break down. At least history has shown he won't. Where John Wall, there's still so much mystery surrounding him. He's not going to be a free agent. It's just, there's so much that goes into that besides like an easy one-for-one -one swap. And on top of that, you have to give an asset to the Rockets to take on Westbrook for a swap that doesn't make you any better. Like maybe a change of scenery might make it help. You know, if, if Westbrook is 
a big issue and it's looked as a big issue in the locker room. But even then, it, it's not just solely him. And bringing in a John Wall isn't going to change the Lakers' fortunes overnight. They weren't going to get some big impact player for a Russell Westbrook. And I get People wanted Russell gone just for the sake of having him gone. But one, that's not how the league works. And two, makes no sense for the Lakers. The Lakers are going to have a lot more options in the offseason because teams are going to be trying to rebuild. So there's contracts that they're willing to give up. Westbrook, again, is an expiring contract. You get teams like the Knicks who are like, we went from being half decent to completely terrible. So maybe we'll take Russell Westbrook and see if he can kind of be the thing that pushes us over. You know, all of us, your options really start to open up. And therefore, you're, the Lakers made the right move. Stan Pat, you got three superstars on your team. Figure it out. The three of you need to figure it out. LeBron is the one of the greatest minds the NBA has ever seen. Anthony Davis is a mismatch nightmare. And Russell Westbrook is the energizer bunny. He keeps going and going and going. Vogel needs to position the lineups better. He needs to spread Westbrook and LeBron's minutes, you know, stagger them a little better. But Westbrook has played pretty solid the last few games. He's actually turn, turn the, got the turnovers down. He's, you know, doing what he needs to do. They are professional players. Figure it out. You wanted this Westbrook. You wanted this big three. It's your guys' job to be professionals, to be the stars that you are, and figure it out. That was what the Lakers did. There was no logical reason for them to make a trade. And I know so many people in the community wanted the Lakers to do something, do anything, right? That's what many people wanted. But sometimes it's better to stand pat than it is to make a stupid decision that not just only mortgages your future, but mortgages and doesn't change your fate at this moment. You know, and that's a big thing. Worst case scenario, you have a tradable asset in Anthony Davis. You have Russell Westbrook's money coming off the books after next year. If LeBron decides to leave because of the situation, well, then guess what? Now you have all of this money and all of this cap space, and you're the Lakers with an Anthony Davis. You might be able to get another star or two, or maybe even trade Davis for a great package and sort of hit the reset button for a couple years and hopefully attract some stars with some young talent. Like, they have so many more options by just standing pat for their future than they did making some silly trade that that just doesn't help you in the moment and if anything could potentially make you worse because again Anthony Davis can't stay healthy he just got hurt again and one of the big problems was when we got to the playoffs last year LeBron was on like 60 percent and Anthony Davis got hurt and we were up to uh, we were up a game on the Suns and it looked like we might actually beat them because they were really struggling with Anthony Davis and LeBron. But when Davis went out, LeBron was kind of by himself and he just, in many ways, just didn't have it in him to, to push them over the top because he was dealing with injuries himself. So that in, is a good sign to have a Russell Westbrook because he can kind of carry the load for you in the playoffs and then just have LeBron do what LeBron does in the fourth quarter. We saw it with the Jazz. Like we saw LeBron, he just kind of trickled his, his, his scoring and kind of just got people involved and didn't really do too much. And then the fourth quarter came and he completely took over and they won the game. And that's very likely what the case will be going into the playoffs. That's what they should do. This team was built for the playoffs. That's what they said from day one, that the Lakers were built for the playoffs. And they are. If you look at the roster, the roster is scattered with veterans that have been in big situations, that know what it takes to win championships, that know what it takes to win in the playoffs, and that is a huge asset. There's a reason young teams never win the championship. Like Milwaukee, even last year, they had a ton of vets, great vets, on that team. I mean, that team was an older team. Many people think Brooklyn is going to win the championship. They were an older team. Yes, they just traded Harden, so they got younger, but they're an older team. A lot of the teams that many people think are going to win the championship are older teams. At least their main core are. They have a couple young guys that, you know, can give them a spark and things like that. But for the most part, they're, they're established players. The ones that are going to play in the playoffs, the majority of minutes, those players are older. Because 
the vets are usually the ones that win the game. So they're the ones that usually hit the big shots. They're the ones that know what the, the big play here and there is, the little intangibles that you don't really see in the box score. Those things matter. And those are the players that are going to do those things in order to win a championship. And so I believe personally that the Lakers did the right move. They stood pat, told the team, figure it out. Not just that, but now that cloud is lifted where all everyone's worried, are we going to get traded? Are we not going to get traded? That's always a thing. Well, now that cloud's lifted. This is the team you got. So go do your best. And I don't think anybody wants to see the Lakers in the playoffs. You know, uh, Cameron Payne is taking shots and making jokes. Yeah, um, let's see. Let's see if those jokes happen in the playoffs. You know, if the Lakers are up 2-1 again and head into LA or something like that. You know, it's just like, I, I don't think anybody wants to run in the Lakers in the playoffs with their experience. A healthy LeBron, a healthy Anthony Davis, you have a big chance of winning uh, on any team. And then add in a Westbrook who can kind of just carry the load in the beginning. You know, I, I just really would like to see the Lakers and, and just say like, here, Westbrook, when you go in the game, I need I need like 10 to 12 points. I'm LeBron Davis are going to sit for, you know, 5 10 minutes. I need you to just I need you to score, man. I need you to get to the basket. I need you to get me 10 to 12 points and then, you know, he can pick up another, you know, 5 to 10 points throughout the the rest of the game, but he needs to just take over in stretches. But as always this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you think that the Lakers did the right thing by standing pat? and not mortgaging their future and seeing what develops in the offseason? Or do you think that, no, they should have made a trade? Yes, they wouldn't have gotten an impact player, but something would have been better than nothing. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you haven't liked this video, hit the like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button, follow by the bell notification, stay up to date with all things sports. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.